three factors that empowers those who are risen. Number one is the system of the voice of God. Is the system of the voice of God. You can discern your season. If God does not help you, you can't stand. You will know it's your season, but it will pass. Have you not seen people who know for three months they know God wants to visit them, but they didn't have the capacity to rise up? They know the season. They discern the season, but their ability is not there. So it's one thing to know your path. It's another thing to know how to receive the divine impulse. And the first divine impute for anybody who will rise and shine is the voice of God. When the voice of God becomes cast, a generation is doomed. When the voice of God becomes cast, a generation is defeated. They don't even need to attempt anything. They are already gone. And so at all points, we need to keep hearing God's voice. That's why Jesus speaking in John 10, 11, He said, my sheep heareth my voice and they obey. So you can't obey until you hear. Because the voice does not just come to give direction. It also comes to empower. In Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1. He said, when I saw the glory of the one that sat upon the throne. I fell like a dead man. And he said, as he spake unto me. He said, the spirit entered into me and carried me to my feet. So when God is talking to you. The spirit is entering you because that's how the technology works. Every time God talks, the spirit moves. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2, he said, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And he said, The earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. But before you saw God say, He said, The spirit moved over the waters. Every time God is speaking, know that the spirit is moving. It is the entrance of the spirit that energizes you to stand. So if you want to stand, you must of necessity hear the voice of God. In Acts chapter 3 verse 8, the impotent man was at the gate. Impotent meaning he can never rise and walk because he already suffered a deficiency that makes it impossible. So even if you lifted him up, he will fall down again because the legs are dead. They are paralyzed until the voice of God came. Silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, rise up and walk. And when they put him up this time around, strength entered him. So the voice of God is the strength for everybody who is standing. The voice of God is the strength for everyone who is arisen. So when God is speaking, he is not just communicating, he is energizing. He is empowering. He is strengthening. That's why everyone must hear. Jesus speaking in Matthew 4 verse 4. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. He will die. Bread can only sustain his natural body. And not for a long time. He said, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. When you eat bread, you have ATP. Energy to function for some hours. But when you receive the voice of God. You have capacity to live life in a glorious fashion. A man who shines, shines because in him dwelleth the word of God richly. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 9 and 11, he said, how shall a young man keep his ways? He said, by taking heed unto thy word. He said, thy word have I put. So wise men store the voice of God in them. So when you put it inside of you, that word carries you into your destiny. The second thing that makes for a man to arise and shine is faith. The moment your faith is alive, you discover you are standing. The moment your faith becomes alive, you will discover you are standing. One of the things the devil attacks, which is also the reason why men fall, is their faith. In Luke 22, 31, Jesus was speaking. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith, he didn't say that you fail not. He said that your faith faileth not. And he said, when thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. So when the devil wants to bring a man down, he attacks his faith. If a man's faith goes down, that man goes down. 
if a man's faith goes up that man goes up and so the greatest attack of the devil is on your faith it's not necessarily your health too. it's not your finances it's not your family the attack of the devil is not on your finances primarily it's not on your health primarily it's not on your family primarily it's on your faith because your finances ride on your faith your health ride on your faith the prosperity of your family rides on your faith if your faith is destroyed your health will be destroyed if your faith is destroyed your finances will be destroyed if your faith is destroyed your family will be destroyed so one attack the devil is launching on the body and on individuals today is on their faith so that you wake up you no longer have conviction for the things of god you wake up the, the word of god suddenly becomes history to you so much so that even when you are reading the bible nothing happens in your heart because the devil has created scenarios and circumstances that undermine the reality of god so much that you think these things don't work that's why you hear people when they talk the word of god they say that's good but let's face reality what do you mean reality you tell somebody about the word they say my brother my brother i understand what you are saying no you don't understand it a christian will tell you i understand this thing you are saying but let's face reality what is reality sir this is what the bible said they say no let's face reality meanwhile the bible said all things are sustained by the word of his power it is in the world where faith is born that reality dwells but this is a generation that no longer has faith come to the area of your finances tell them bible the bible teaches to give and hear the way they will attack you the moment you say give they say this is fake this is a fake man of god you know what people want to hear you are blessed go home meanwhile giving is not even about the preacher it is a system of the kingdom the way god checks a man's heart is by the direction his finances go to he said where a man's treasure is that is where his heart is he didn't say it will be that's where it is if your money goes only in the direction of pleasure it means your heart is in pleasure so when god says give he's looking for an opportunity to study your heart Number two, when you give, it's an act of honor. He said, honor the Lord with your substance. So you don't need to be preached into giving. If you know the word of God, giving will be your lifestyle. Honor the Lord with your substance. So the reason you give is because you are honoring God. But you see a generation without the word of God, they want to follow the philosophies of the world. And when they run into disaster, they want to force God to come and intervene. Whereas God has principles. And so Jesus was speaking in Luke chapter 18 verse 8. He said, when the Son of Man returns, will he still find faith on earth? Because the way the devil is attacking faith, is not just in individuals. The way he's attacking faith is in the whole world. He's attacking faith. He wants to annihilate faith from the world. And he knows what he's doing. Because the Bible said, the just shall live by faith so if we say we are justified the only way we are supposed to live is by faith finally what makes men to rise is honor i told you yesterday from first samuel 2 30 he said him that honor me i will honor him that despises me shall be lightly esteemed check 90 percent of the time my calculation my arithmetic may be wrong but most of the time when you find men who are not relevant is because of arrogance dishonor and disloyalty somewhere in their heart they dishonored the people that god sent to lift them up the bible said in genesis 49 from verse 1 when jacob was old he told his children gather around me i will tell you the things that will befall you and everything he said became their destiny god gives authority to men to raise men only god makes men but god has many channels one of the channels god uses to raise men is men that's why you must be careful not only to honor god see there are many people who keep shouting only god will i honor you will die in obscurity it's not only god you should honor you should honor men and there are many categories of men you should honor number one honor your father and your mother the second category of people you should honor are spiritual authorities and even the leaders of your government honor them the bible said not just to honor them but to pray for them that you may live a peaceable life most times in dishonor we frustrate people and because they enter into frustration they return the frustration back to us in multiplied measures 
and you find people suffering and dying. See, if a man has entered the place of power, quickly start praying for him. At least if not for anything, let him have sense. Because if he doesn't have sense, you are finished. He can wake up and carelessly make a declaration that will throw the whole nation into poverty. He will make a declaration or a statement that will cause many people to die of hunger and frustration. Pray for them. Let them have sense. How do you rise in this kingdom? By the voice of God, by the spirit of faith, and by the principle of honor. Thank you for watching this video. We trust you have been tremendously blessed. To get more messages by Apostle Michael Oroho, kindly join our Telegram channel by following the link on your screen. Your life will never remain the same. God bless you.